In this video, we're going to focus on rotational kinetic energy. So in this problem, we need to calculate the inertia and the rotational kinetic energy of the disk. So let's start with the inertia. The inertia of a disk is equal to 1 half times the mass of the disk times r squared. So we have the mass of the disk, which is 5 kilograms, and the radius is 1.3 meters. So it's half times 5 times 1.3 squared. And so the inertia of the disk is 4.225 kilograms times square meters. Now, how can we calculate the rotational kinetic energy of the disk? And how can we derive its equation? So first, let's start with the expression for kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared. Linear velocity is angular velocity times the radius. So let's replace the v squared with omega squared r squared. So now we have 1 half m omega squared r squared, which I'm going to rewrite it as 1 half m r squared times omega squared. And the sum of this quantity, m r squared, that's related to the inertia of an object. So therefore, the rotational kinetic energy is 1 half times the inertia times omega squared. Notice the similarities between this equation and this equation. So in both cases, we still have the same fraction, 1 half. Now, instead of mass, we have rotational inertia. And instead of angular, I mean linear speed, we have angular speed. So this is the equation that we need to calculate the rotational kinetic energy of an object. So the rotational kinetic energy is this equation, as we said before. So let's go ahead and calculate it. So inertia is 4.225 in this problem. And omega, the angular speed, is 15 radians per second. So this is going to be 400. 75.3 joules. So that's the rotational kinetic energy of the disk. Number two, a sphere rolls down a 20 degree incline starting from rest at a height of 50 meters. How fast will it be moving forward when it reaches the bottom of the incline? So we need to find the final speed at this point. How can we do so? The best way to do this is to use conservation of energy. The sphere currently has potential energy. And that energy is going to be converted to translational kinetic energy because the sphere is moving forward. But also, some of the energy is going to be used to rotate the sphere. So it's going to go into rotational kinetic energy. So the potential energy of the sphere initially is mgh. The kinetic energy of the sphere is 1 half mv squared. And the rotational kinetic energy is 1 half inertia times omega squared. Now we don't have the mass of the sphere, which means somehow we need to cancel m out of the equation. Now the inertia of a sphere is 2 over 5 mr squared. Now keep in mind, omega times r is v. So omega squared times r squared is v squared. So we can replace r squared omega squared with v squared. And we can cancel the twos. So what we have now is mgh is equal to 1 half mv squared plus 1 over 5 mv squared. 
Next, we need to combine the fractions 1 half plus 1 fifth. So let's do that on the side somewhere. 1 over 2 plus 1 over 5. To add these two fractions, we need to get common denominators. So let's multiply this fraction by 2 over 2 and the one on the left by 5 over 5. So it's going to be 5 over 10 plus 2 over 10, which is 7 over 10. So therefore, we have MGH is equal to 7 over 10 times MV squared. So now we could divide both sides by the mass. And so what we have left over is GH is equal to 7 over 10 times V squared. Now let's multiply both sides by 10 over 7. So on the right side, the 7s will cancel and the 10s will cancel. So what we have now is 10 GH divided by 7 is equal to V squared. So V is the square root of 10 GH over 7. So now let's plug in the values to get the final answer. G is 9.8. The height is 50 meters. And so it's going to be the square root of 10 times 9.8 times 50 divided by 7. So this should give you a final answer of 26.5 meters per second. So this is the linear speed of this sphere as it rolls down the incline once it reaches the bottom of the incline. Number three, a 20 kilogram solid disc slash pulley is attached to a hanging 10 kilogram block, which is released from rest 500 meters above the ground. How fast will the block be moving just before it hits the ground? So how can we calculate the final speed? And we're given the mass of the pulley, which is 20 kilograms. So with this information, what can we do to calculate the final speed just before it hits the ground? Now, in this problem, we're going to do it two ways. Using conservation of energy and using forces and free body diagrams. So let's start by setting it up as a conservation of energy problem. Now, this block has the ability to fall. The pulley is fixed in place. So because this block can fall, it has potential energy. And as it begins to fall, the potential energy of that block decreases. And that energy is converted to the kinetic energy of the block because the block is going to move down with a speed. And this pulley is fixed in place, but it has the ability to rotate. So as this block falls, the pulley will gain rotational kinetic energy as it begins to spin. The potential energy of the block is mgh. So let's call this lowercase m, and the mass of the pulley, or the disc, will be capital M. The kinetic energy of the block is 1 half mv squared. And the rotational kinetic energy of the disc is 1 half inertia times omega squared. Now the inertia of a solid disc is 1 half mr squared. And we know that omega times r is v, so r squared times omega squared must be v squared. So right now we have this equation. mgh is 1 half mv squared plus 1 fourth mv squared. So now let's plug in the data. The mass of the block is 10 times g times h, which is 500. And then that's going to be 1 half times the mass of the block, which is 10, times v squared, plus 1 fourth times the mass of the pulley, times v squared. 10 times 9.8 times 500 is 49,000. Half of 10 is 5, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. And 5 plus 5 is 10. So if we divide both sides by 10, we're going to get 
4,900 on the left side, and v squared on the right side. So now all we need to do is take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 4,900 is 70. So the final speed is 70 meters per second. So this is the answer. Now let's confirm it using another method. So we're going to use kinematics and free body diagrams. So what we need to do is calculate the acceleration of the system. If we could find the acceleration of the system and knowing the height that it falls, we could easily find the final speed. So let's focus on calculating the acceleration of the system. The first method that we can use is Newton's second law. The acceleration is going to be the net force acting on the system divided by the total mass of the system. So the only driving force that we have is the weight of this block. That causes the system to move down in the negative y direction. So the weight of that block is going to be mg divided by the total mass. So that's going to be the mass of the block plus the inertial mass of the disk, which is c times m. Now, because the inertia is 1 half mr squared, the c value is the 1 half in front of the inertia equation for a solid disk. So c is 1 half, so this is going to be 1 half m. So that's the equation for the acceleration. But I'm going to show you how to derive that equation using forces and free body diagrams. So I'm just going to rewrite it here, just for reference, since I'm going to need the space on the right. So this is the equation that we need to derive. Now this block is affected by an upward tension force. And that tension force, which slows down the block from falling, is the same force that pulls the pulley down towards the right. And so that tension force creates a torque that causes the pulley to rotate clockwise. So that torque is a negative torque. So first, we need to write an expression for the net torque acting on the pulley or the solid disk. So that net torque is equal to this value. So that's a negative T, or negative tau. And this torque is equal to inertia times alpha. Now the net torque acting on the disk is also moving in the clockwise direction, so that has to be negative as well which means that these two negative signs will cancel, so we really don't have to worry about it in this problem. The inertia of a solid disk is 1 half mr squared. And the torque is the tension force times the radius. So we have a tension force, and r is the moment arm, which is the distance between the axis of rotation and the line of action of the tension force, or basically where the tension force is located. So now acceleration is alpha times r, and alpha is a divided by r. So let's replace alpha with a over r. So now we could cancel one of the r's on the left, and so what we have left over is 1 half mra, which is equal to tr. And then we could cancel r. So let's save this equation. So 1 half ma is equal to the tension force acting on the pulley. So now let's write the net force equation for that block. So the net force acting on that block is equal to the upward tension force T minus the downward weight force on that block, which is mg. Now the net force based on Newton's second law is ma. Now this block is accelerating in the negative y direction, so that's going to be negative ma. And so that's equal to t minus mg. Now to get t by itself, we need to take this term, which is negative on the right side, and move it to the left side, where it's going to become positive. 
So mg minus ma is equal to t. Now let's replace t with 1 half ma. Now our goal at this point is to isolate a. So let's take negative ma and move it to the right side. So what we have now is mg is equal to 1 half ma plus lowercase m times a. So now we could factor out a on the right side. So mg is going to be a times 1 half m plus m. So solving for a, it's going to be mg divided by 1 half m plus m. So as you can see, these two equations are equivalent. So now you have two ways in which you could derive the equation for the acceleration for this problem. So now let's go ahead and calculate the acceleration. So it's mg, which is 10 times 9.8, divided by m, which is 10, plus 1 half the mass of the pulley, which is 20. 10 times 9.8 is 98. Half of 20 is 10 plus another 10, that's 20. So the acceleration is 9, 98, excuse me, divided by 20. And so that's going to be 4.9 meters per second squared. So now that we have the acceleration of the system, we can now find out how fast the block is going to be moving before it hits the ground. The equation that we need is this equation. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2AD. Now the block is released from rest, which means that the initial speed is zero. The acceleration of the block is negative 4.9 meters per second squared. The reason why it's a negative is because it's accelerating in the negative y direction. Now D is the displacement. The block is going down 500 meters. So the displacement in the y direction is negative 500. So it's going to be 2 times negative 4.9 times negative 500. And so V final squared is 4,900. So now we got to take the square root of both sides. Now, 4,900 is basically 49 times 100. So this is going to be the square root of 49 times the square root of 100. The square root of 49 is 7, and the square root of 100 is 10. So the square root of 4,900 is 70. So the final speed is going to be 70 meters per second. And so, as you can see, it's the same answer as what we had here. So you can solve this problem by taking a conservation of energy approach or by finding the acceleration of the system and then use kinematics to calculate the final velocity.